All right, Mark Rogers TV back with you as we continue to look at the best players in the SEC. We are going position by position with two of the most knowledgeable SEC guys I know, Chad Neepling of SEC Sports Insider and, of course, the doctor, Dr. Peter Flournoy. And we've made our way to the defense and a very talented group of linebackers. Peter, what you got for us with the linebackers in the SEC here? Well, as you said, it's a great core of linebackers that's coming back across the board. A lot of these positions we we looked at Mark and Chad, you know, it's kind of been who's going to step up. But in this case, there's a lot of guys coming back, a lot of talent coming back. And so I'm going to jump right into my top five list of returning players for this uh, this year coming into the spring. And number five for me is a guy to Mississippi State, and that's Benedrick McKinney, a guy that really, you know, has kind of flown under the radar. He had a, uh, you know, and had 173 tackles his last two seasons. And that whole Mississippi State defense has flown under the radar for the most part. And this is a guy who I think is going to have a big, big future. And he's really going to have a great year. His freshman year had 102 tackles. Uh, sophomore year, 71 tackles. And I expect him to get closer to those freshman numbers again this year. Number four for me is a guy – that I'm absolutely in love with his game, and that is Leonard Floyd from the University of Georgia. Floyd is six foot four. He's very lean. He's 220 pounds. He looks like he could easily get up to 260, 270, but he seems to be the guy that's come in to fill the row as the next great pass rusher for the University of Georgia. You remember under Todd Grantham, uh, the first year he was there, they had Justin Houston, who led the SEC in sacks and really was having a fantastic season and, and went on to the NFL and having a good uh, career for the Chiefs as well. Then they went to big sack man Jones, Jarvis Jones, and two years in a row led the SEC in sacks. And this year was supposed to be Jordan Jenkins' year to step up and be that guy. But instead, here comes true freshman, uh, the true freshman Leonard Floyd, who had an amazing season for a freshman, started eight games, 55 tackles, nine and a half tackles for loss, six and a half sacks, 22 quarterback hurries, really in, in limited play early on. And so he was a guy that really began to come on the scene and really cause havoc. And I don't know if there's a guy at the linebacker position that has more upside than Leonard Floyd, who will be a sophomore next season. Number three for me is A.J. Johnson from the University of Tennessee. Of course, A.J. has been a guy that's got a lot of publicity. He's had two straight years over 100 tackles. The biggest thing for me about A.J. is that he's made quite too many of those running upfield catching people. Tennessee's defense has got to get better, but A.J. Johnson definitely is the highlight of that defense and really has had a great career. Number two uh, is where you expect to find an Alabama linebacker somewhere on this list, and this year's guy is Trey DePriest, as I'm sure you guys are going to talk about, and so I won't talk too much about him, but every year it's somebody – uh, for the University of Alabama, steps up that linebacker position to become a first-round draft pick, and Trey DePriest is going to be that guy. 65 tackles, seven half tackles for loss, two sacks, two forced fumbles. The number one for me is a guy that really had a great season last year. You're talking about leading the SEC in tackles with 133 tackles, and that is Ray McWilson from the University of Georgia. Now I want you to think about this. Todd Grantham is gone, and and one thing about Todd Grantham was he was great at designing schemes but he was terrible at teaching the game. He really is an NFL-type coach, and he was really didn't do a great job at all teaching the players. But their linebacker coach, Coach O, who was with the Redskins for 14 years and then came to Georgia and now left back with the Redskins, he's done an amazing job teaching these linebackers. You think back to last year's draft. You had two first-round guys and Alec Ogletree and, and Jarvis Jones. This year, you got the number one and number three guys in tackles in the SEC with, with, with Ray Mc uh, Wilson and 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 you know it's just amazing you know you also got Jordan Jenkins coming back you got Leonard Floyd the kind of linebackers they're going to be stacking up across the board for Georgia's going to be really good this year but Ray McWilson's about as good as they get he's consistent he can rush the passer he's pretty good in pass coverage and he seems to always make the sure tackle all right, Doctor, it's a good list. Uh, I think I got four out of five if I'm matching up against you, but uh, we'll give you something different. So before I go, we'll pitch it to Chad and, and let him match things up. Yeah, I, um, you know, I got to agree with, with a lot of what, uh, with what Peter was saying, especially when it comes to Georgia's linebacking uh, group. They, they're going to be one of the most talented uh, group of guys to step on the field this season, especially uh, with Pruitt coming in and, and that defensive scheme he's going to bring. Um, you mentioned a guy earlier, um, 
Peter that was on that it was on your list, and at number five he comes in for me, and that's Leonard Floyd. Um, you had mentioned the fact that he had 22 quarterback hurries, and a lot of that is due to the fact because he's a long, lean, aggressive uh, guy off the edges. Um, he's the type of guy that uh, he's going to be in your face. And as a freshman, you know, to be able to tally up 55 tackles and, like you had said before, not getting that much playing time speaks a lot to his game. Coming back as a sophomore under Pruitt, I expect him to to be a, an absolute beast coming in uh, to spring and going into fall. He's definitely going to be a guy that's going to be starting. Um, I think he's definitely going to be a guy that, that's going to be a, a first – you know, he's going to be in the top round NFL draft at some point. Um but uh, going on, my next guy is going to be Trey DePriest. I've got Trey DePriest at number four. And and like you said, you can't really talk about linebackers in the SEC without including somebody out of Alabama. And uh, DePriest is is the guy that's going to have to step up and take the reins for Alabama after Mosley you know, is now entering the draft. And Mosley is considered to be the number one inside linebacker pick coming into the draft this year, um, You know, former Buckus Award winner. You know, DePriest is going to step into that and – Someone would say typically, so well, that's going to be big shoes. That's not going to be big shoes for this guy. He's a big guy. He's he's very aggressive. He's he's going to hit the hole. Um, he was able to to come in last year and racked up uh, you know about sixty five tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, two forced fumbles, and you know he's this is going to be his senior season, and he's had three previous seasons that were pretty good. But last season, if anything, showed you a glimpse with him sharing time with Mosley of what he's going to be able to do on his own this next year. Um, another guy I've got as number three is, is McKinney out of Mississippi State. This guy is probably one of the most unknown guys on this list when, you, when you're talking about top five players. Um, not a lot of people know about him. And I have to agree with Peter. Mississippi State went under the radar last year as far as defense is concerned. And they actually return a lot of guys this next year. So watch out for them as a unit as a whole. But uh, with McKinney, McKinney foregone the, the NFL draft this year to come back his, for his junior year. And that says a lot about him. But he, he's a guy that with 71 tackles as a sophomore and 102 as a freshman – you know, you're going to have a hard time trying to keep this guy, you know, off the field and without blowing up your plays uh, this fall. And going into the spring, I look for him to be the leader in the linebacking core for Mississippi State. At number two, I've got A.J. Johnson. Um, Johnson's another guy that turned around and, and decided not to go into the draft and come back for his senior year. Uh, much to the happiness of Butch, you know, Butch Jones and company, they, they were really loving it. They've got a couple guys that were freshmen last year in the secondary that are coming back. That'll also be able to help out on that defensive unit. Um, AJ Johnson's had back-to-back hundred tackle seasons. He's a guy that you know, whenever he uh, he submitted his his pre-draft uh, uh, appraisal, I guess you could say, is they, they came back and said he was going to be a mid-round or somewhere, third, fourth round guy. So he decided it would be best if he came back and kind of worked on a few things. He does have some things he needs to work on in his game, um, and I think we'll see a lot of that coming into this next season. And my number one guy is, is, of course, is the same as Peter's, is, is Remick Wilson. The guy is an absolute animal. He was the SEC leading tackler last year. Um, he's a guy that's going to come in, and, and like the names of Jarvis and, and Ogletree, he's going to be another guy that's going to be talked about going into the draft next year. All right. Uh, I don't know that I can really fill in much after uh, you guys got done there, but uh, I think you guys stole my notes. But at the same time, I've got some nuggets <laughs> here that I'll try to pass along here, and I'm throwing in one guy that uh, is on neither one of your lists. So we'll start at number five with uh, the junior Bernard Rick McKinney out of Mississippi State, as Peter talked about, and you both covered, led the Mississippi State Bulldogs in tackle, a very underrated defense, a very good front seven coming back from 2013, a defense that brings back eight starters, so he's going to be right at the middle of that charge, and I think uh, Peter tweeted out uh, sometime tonight that uh, as he reviews the defensive uh, top fives uh, in the SEC, it's really this year for Mississippi State in particular and also to a lesser degree Ole Miss to really step up and and uh, seize this uh, window of opportunity. And here's a kid that was a freshman All-America with 102 stops that season. And again, with with Whitley Skinner and Autry gone off that Mississippi State defense, those are three integral parts of that defense, but they do have the eight starters back. This was the fourth-ranked defense in the SEC, and McKinney's right there with seven tackles for loss, three and a half sacks. He's an excellent player at number five. At number four, I'm going with Sir Darius Bryant out of Ole Miss, second-team All-SEC selection, 
78 tackles, led the Rebels in tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss. He might be number one on this list in getting into the opponent's backfield. Ole Miss uh, goes with a 4-2-5 defense. He's going to be suspended, though, for that opener against Boise State. Uh, uh, opening game for the Rebels that I anticipate uh, being a really good one. But again, Sir Darius Bryant going into the senior season, I've got him at number four. At number three, we go with the beast, A.J. Johnson out of Tennessee. Um, led the SEC in tackles a couple years ago, was in the top three this season, uh, this past season in 2013. Eight and a half tackles for loss. Now, this is not necessarily a guy that you want dropping back in coverage. He sees ball carriers and he goes after him. He goes after the quarterback. He's not backpedaling too well uh, uh, in comparison to some of these other guys. As a sidebar to the A.J. Johnson selection at number three, keep in mind that his best friend and his roommate, uh, Kurt Magid, had an exceptional season, uh, dynamic player, probably a more athletic player actually than A.J. Johnson, tore ligaments, missed uh, some of 2012, uh, all of 2013. Both of these guys were freshman All-America players and exactly, uh, again, Johnson, the more sturdy, durable run stuffer, Magic, the guy that's got more athleticism, but they expect him to be all the way back, and we could have two of the better linebackers in the SEC right there in Knoxville, Tennessee. At number two, I go with Ray McWilson, the senior out of Georgia, uh, first team all SEC. I think we've said uh, about four times that he led the SEC with 133 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, a first year starter there, uh, and really shined against uh, with, with Coach O as uh, Peter suggested uh, coming in from the Redskins, a guy that really can teach linebacking play, uh, Kirk Olabadati there with uh, the Georgia Bulldogs. It's going to be very fun to watch that linebacking crew roam from sideline to sideline, as you guys mentioned, with Leonard Floyd, and also another guy that I don't think made any of the top five lists in Amarlo Herrera out of Georgia, again, third in the SEC in tackles with 112, and a guy that I really discovered uh, talking about Herrera as I deviate off my top five list, because uh, watching the South Carolina game, he made two goal line, goal line plays uh, late in that football game that preserved a win for the Bulldogs uh, in uh, taking out South Carolina. Uh, number one, I'm going with Trey DePriest, and I know that he's got a heavy burden with A.J. Mosley gone, and he moves into that Mosley spot as leader, as the guy that makes the calls, so it's going to be put up or sh uh, shut up for Trey DePriest, here in uh, 14, 65 tackles last year. He's faster than Mosley, seven and a half tackles for loss. Of course, playing for what was and has been the last several years the number one defense in the SEC at 286 yards given up per game. So I'm going to Priest at number one. Did want to mention a few guys that are kind of interesting that could bump into that top five. Uh, we didn't mention Denzel Kimdichie out of Ole Miss. Uh, second team all SEC last year. He's suspended for the Boise State game. He's gotten in some trouble as well. He's got like a $2 million civil suit against him right now. Um, he played 10 games, only started six last year, so he was nicked up early in the season. Uh, didn't really get a full season in for the Rebels. Uh, Casanova McKenzie with Auburn at 75 stops as a junior coming in this season, so he's played well through his sophomore campaign. Uh, and Amarlo Herrera, who I mentioned with Georgia, 112 stops, and really caught my attention again with two goal line plays against uh, the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks. And I also jotted down uh, another Gamecock in Sherrod Golighty, who was second all-team SEC. Uh, he's taking over that uh, hybrid uh, spur position from Devontae Holloman there at South Carolina, so he's one to look out for as well. Any thoughts on uh, the best of the rest list? Well, you know, you, one guy that one guy that uh, that that I mentioned just uh, just uh, you know a little bit. Uh, well, you know, of course, when you you don't want to keep covering the same team over and over. Jeremy Pruitt really has inherited an amazing linebacker core there at Georgia, and you know, if you you talked about you talked about Marlo Herrera a little bit, it's really amazing a guy that's third on that list coming in didn't make our list and. And he's just such a big, strong, physical player. And and the thing about it is, is that when you look across the board, I, Jordan Jenkins to me, 
Lee from Georgia is one of the top five most athletic. Um, you might remember it kind of went viral, him leaping over the player uh, in the Georgia practice to go and make a play. And another guy you mentioned is Cam Dietschy that doesn't get a lot of respect, but, man, he's really had two fantastic seasons. I agree with that. There's a there's a couple guys that, you know, uh, Casanova McKenzie out of Auburn is a guy that didn't get a lot of uh, – that we didn't talk about necessarily. That's another guy that, you know, you look at that, you know, he was the Tigers' leading linebacker last year. He was able to, you know, 75 tackles, I think eight for a loss, two sacks. You know, and and that was as a sophomore in the SEC, and of course that team went on to the national championship. Um, you know, so they're looking at him to come back and and lead that defense. And that Auburn defense actually was another. You know, we talked about Mississippi State's defense being underrated this last year, kind of going under the radar. Auburn's defense didn't really get the respect that it may have deserved last season. Um, it was it was pretty aggressive on the on the on the edges. They were really good at rushing the quarterback and and making you make decisions uh, that would you know, that would benefit them in the secondary. That's why, you know, uh, a guy like Robinson Therese was able to to capitalize as much as he did last season. Um, you know, the guy that uh, I, I think – I don't know if you mentioned him or not, Mark, but Sky Moore out of South Carolina. Um, South Carolina's defenses here lately have, uh, have gotten to the point where they're starting to do plug-and-play, where they're actually able to go out and get guys and – they're able to put new guys into positions that that are you know second third string from the year before and not skip a beat. South Carolina is actually getting their program pretty stable right now, and and that says a lot about them. And and this this team this next year, the South Carolina defense, just because Clowney's gone and Corals and those guys and Sutton are going to be gone, I don't think that they're really going to skip that much of a beat come this season. Good points there, and I think the one stat that jumped off the page for all of us, and again, I, I had to do a double take on this one, 22 hurries out of, uh, again, Leonard Floyd in rushing the quarterback. Everybody else is in single digits, and this kid's getting the quarterback 22 times, so I'm going to be interested to see. You guys have really put up this uh, Georgia Bulldog yep. linebacking core, so they're going to be on my radar to, to watch the entire season. You know, Mark. All uh, right, actually, I think we are good to go. That, we... that is as as good as he was. He didn't leave the team in quarterback hurries. Mm -hmm. and, and who was that? Who led the team in quarterback hurries? Are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I, I thought I'd lost y'all for a second. No, uh, just just as I was talking about early, Jordan Jenkins left led him. Uh, with uh, 23 quarterback hurries. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we got a pretty uh, clear top five or top three or four, and then we uh, all the three of us have maybe one wild card that we spun in there. I think you guys probably matched your two top fives uh, pretty closely, and then I went uh, with Sir Darius Bryant. I brought him in there, and I missed on uh, the sophomore now, Leonard Floyd, coming off a remarkable freshman season. But uh, – it's looking pretty good at the uh, linebacker spot for the SEC. This is the one position that we saw most of the first and second teamers, especially the second teamers, all conference coming back from 2013. So we've got some proven players stepping up here. Not so much at cornerback and at safety as we look at the defensive backs. We're going to come back and do that again. Chad Neepling of SEC, Sports Insider, and of course the doctor, Dr. SEC, Peter Flournoy. Boys, uh, let's uh, come on back and talk uh, defensive backs in the SEC. All right. Mm -hmm.